All right, spheres. Spheres are our friends in physics. We love spheres. Um, so we can often use Gauss's law to determine the electric field if we know, if we can calculate, if the area, if the electric field is constant over a surface, and we can calculate what the area is because if you have the flux, the flux is equal to, of a closed surface, is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. And if your electric field is constant, that is also equal to your electric field times the area of the surface. So you can calculate the um, the potential of the, of the surface. Now, to have a spherically symmetric system, um, to have a constant electric field, you need to ha in a spherical system, you need to have a constant, um, you need to have a spherically symmetric system. The first one, this is spherically symmetric. This is spherically symmetric too. So your charge density can change with radius, but it just has to change. It has to look the same at whatever angle you go out in. As long as you're a certain point from the origin, you you still have spherical symmetry. This guy, not spherically symmetric. If you wanted to figure out what this is, you'd have to do some ugly math. There's undoubtedly some tricks to do it, but it's much trickier. Okay, so then if you have a spherically symmetric system, because your system has to look the same wherever you go, radially, you if you are inside of the bubble, you don't know you don't know your absolute reference frame. So your electric field can only be in the r hat direction, and the normal to your surface is in the r hat direction as well. Um, so if you have a spherically symmetric system, and now here I'm not going to make any assumptions about um, how the charge is distributed, for a spherically symmetric system, your electric field has to be perpendicular to the norm, or has to be parallel to the normal of the surface. So your flux is equal to the enclosed charge divided by epsilon naught, which is equal to the magnitude of the electric field times the area, which is 4 pi r squared for a sphere. So you can solve this for the electric field. And in any spherically symmetric system, the electric field is the enclosed charge over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. But this is just Coulomb's law. What that tells you is that if you have a spherically symmetric system, and you are outside of the sphere, you cannot tell how that charge is distributed. It looks the exact same to you if you, um, if you say, are looking at an atom and trying to figure out, or looking at a uh, helium ion and trying to figure out where the charge is from, uh, if you are far outside, um, and it is on long time scale, spherically symmetric. It is not on shorter time scales. If you're far enough, but if you are um, looking at it slowly enough, it's spherically symmetric. And you're going to get that it just looks like a point charge. It has the same electric field as a point charge. That's pretty deep. Um, okay, so then you can consider a few different cases, and yeah. So we're going to consider a uniform density. Um, so we're going to consider, I'd already showed in the previous slide, that you're, you are totally insensitive to how the charge is distributed as long if you're outside the sphere, as long as it's spherically symmetric. So now we're going to assume it's uniformly uh, distributed inside the sphere. So in that case, your charge enclosed. So you still have the 1 over epsilon naught, and your charge enclosed is the charge density Q over the volume of the sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed, times the amount of charge, or times the volume 
of your sphere um, that is, in this case, inside the sphere. So that is 4 thirds pi little r squared. And that has to equal the electric field times the area. Let me go through and highlight so it's clear which surface I'm looking at. I'm looking right here. 4 thirds, or, sorry, the electric field is then times the area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared. Okay, we get a lot of cancellation. These constants cancel out nicely. And I see I have a typo. Um, now, I can write, I can solve this for the electric field. The electric field is equal to 1 over epsilon naught Q over R. Q over 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R cubed R. So that's all my electric field is. So my electric field inside the sphere depends linearly on where I am in the sphere. Outside the sphere, we have our example. It looks like a point charge. And then we can plot that. And you see it goes, it increases linearly. The electric field increases linearly and then starts dropping off as 1 over r squared. And you can draw the field lines for that, so it slowly increases, and then it starts dropping off as 1 over r squared.